We have reached the final week of the regular season. I am Bobby Broyles along with Rob Washburn for CA Hoops Weekly presented by Under Armour. It was another exciting week around the CA, Rob, which is set up for a thrilling finish to the regular season this Saturday. Yeah, here we are in the final week of the regular season, and the only thing that's set for next week's tournament is that Charleston will be the number three seed. There are two big storylines for fans to follow. The first is at the top, where Hofstra needs one win to lock up the top seed for the CA tournament and two victories to go wire to wire and earn their first outright CA regular season title. Right on their heels, though, is Northeastern, which has won seven of its last eight games and could claim its second straight regular season crown if the pride slips up. The second storyline to watch is the battle to finish in the top six of the, six of the standings and earn a bye into the quarterfinals of the CA tournament. Just two games separate five teams between fourth and eighth, eighth place, and there are several head-to-head matchups between those squads this week. Now, we've talked all year long about the balance and competitiveness of the conference, and you can't ask for a more exciting finish than we have in store this week. Absolutely. Action resumes this Thursday night at 7 with every game having huge implications in the CA standings. Let's begin with Northeastern as they come into the week, a game behind Hofstra mm-hmm. as they travel yeah. to Delaware. The Blue Hens looking for the season sweep of the Huskies as they currently sit in the fourth spot in the standings. Yeah, after battling through injury and illness, Northeastern might be playing its best basketball of the season. The Huskies are the most balanced team off Offensively in the CA with seven guys averaging better than eight points per game, and they do such a tremendous job sharing the ball. Veteran point guard Vasa Pushita runs the show, but you never know where else the points might come from. Last Saturday against Towson, it was Thomas Murphy who broke loose for a career-high 21 points and 12 rebounds. They're also one of the league's top defensive teams, especially when it comes to shutting down the three-point line, and Donnell Gresham has made life miserable for some of the top guards in the CAA. Now, Delaware has been struggling some on the offensive end over the past couple of weeks, but as you said, they're in a position to earn a top-four seed with a couple of wins. The Blue Hens should be confident as the only conference team to get a victory at Matthews Arena this season, beating the Huskies 82-80 in double overtime back on December 30th. Freshman Ithiel Horton poured in a career-high 27 points in that game, and Delaware Delaware also got 37 combined points from Ryan Allen and Eric Carter. It will take a similar type of balanced effort to complete the sweep on Thursday. Also Thursday night at 7 on CA.TV and regionally televised on NBC Sports Philadelphia Plus, Hofstra will have a chance at securing a share of the regular season title as the Pride will be at Drexel. Mm -hmm. The Dragons are sitting on that coveted (laughs) sixth seed right now going into this week, Rob. Yeah, certainly a lot on the line for both of these teams Mm -hmm. in this one. For Hofstra, a victory means the number one seed for the CA tournament and at least a share of its second CA regular season title. The Pride's prolific offense continues to click along on all cylinders with the team putting up over 90 points in five of their past six games. Justin Wright Foreman averaged over 30 points in the two contests last week and has jumped to ninth place on the conference's all-time scoring list. The issue for Hofstra has been on defense, where they've given up over 80 points in five straight contests. Defense was an area of strength for this team earlier in the year, and it will be important for them to shore things up on that end of the floor. Defense is also a key for Drexel, which held Delaware to 42% shooting in last Saturday's 68-60 win over the Hens. When the Dragons have held their opponent under 46% in CA play, they are a perfect 6-0. Drexel suffered a very tough blow last week when leading scorer Troy Harper suffered a season-ending injury in practice. However, the Dragons have the firepower to overcome that loss with strong play from freshman point guard Cameron Winter as well as forwards Alihan Demir and James Butler. Victory on Thursday would greatly enhance Drexel's chances of an opening round bye in the CAA tournament. Our CAA Game of the Week on Thursday night at 7 on Sports Live will feature William & Mary, who is on a roll coming into this Mm -hmm. week, Rob. They will travel to Towson to take on the Tigers, a huge game for both these teams as they look to stay out of the first round. Yeah, William & Mary is another team that's playing its best basketball of the season, having won three straight and five of its last seven. Offensively, it's been the inside-out combo of Nathan Knight and Matt Milan. Knight has topped the 30-point mark in three of his last four games, while Milan has contributed nearly 22 points over his past three outings and has drained 14 threes over that stretch. The other key for the Tribe has been defense, where they have forced 53 turnovers and made 31 steals over the three-game winning streak. Now, Towson suffered a pair of tough road losses at Hofstra and Northeastern last week, but they're 5-5 five and five over the past 10 games with two of those setbacks coming in double overtime. The Tigers have their own inside-out duo with guard Brian Fobbs tallying at least 20 points in seven of his last 11 outings and forward Nakai Sanders recording double-doubles in two of his last three contests. Defensively, Towson has held six of its last seven opponents under 45% field goal shooting and the Tigers lead the league in rebound margin. These are two teams with contrasting styles, and it will be interesting to see which one can get the tempo where they want it. 
Moving on to the final Saturday of the regular season, we begin in Harrisonburg at 4 on CA.TV as two in-state rivals will square off as JMU plays host to William & Mary. The Triver playing their basketball, like we said, of the season right now, while the Dukes are coming off that monster upset at Hofstra. <laughs> Still a lot on the line on this one, though, Rob. Yeah, regardless of the outcome of Thursday's action, both of these teams will want to finish the regular season on a high note, and this game will likely have a big impact on yeah. tournament seeding. These teams haven't met since the conference opener back in December, but it was a one-point game with 20 Nine seconds left before the Tribe pulled out the win. William & Mary's Justin Pierce showed off his multitude of talents in the first matchup with 20 points, 10 rebounds, 7 assists, and 4 steals, and he's been filling the stat sheet with similar numbers during William & Mary's recent winning streak. As you mentioned, James, you should be riding a wave of momentum after last Saturday's 104-99 victory at Hofstra that ended the Pride's 18-game home court winning streak. Matt Lewis had a career night for the Dukes, pouring in 40 points, including a tough three-pointer at the buzzer that forced overtime, and he added seven rebounds and seven assists. It will also be senior day for guards Stucky Mosley and forward Devell Phillips, two guys who have filled huge leadership roles on this young team. These two in-state rivals have had a number of great games over the years, and I expect mm -hmm. another on Saturday. Yeah. And we wrap up with our final CA game of the week on Sports Live in Newark as Delaware plays host to Hofstra. The Pride with an opportunity to capture an outright CA regular season title could be on the line in this contest, Rob. Yeah, interestingly, Hofstra opened CA play back in December with one of its most dominant performances of the season against Delaware, and now the Pride has a chance to cap their title run against the Hens. Hofstra was a sizzling 14-23 from three-point range in the first matchup and defensively held Delaware to just 26% field goal shooting. It's hard to imagine they can match those numbers on either end of the floor again, but I'm sure they'll be looking for similar effort to build momentum for next week's CAA tournament. On the flip side, we know that the Blue Hens have proven to be a much better team than they showed in that first meeting and in fact followed that loss with a victory at Northeastern 48 hours later. It will be senior day for Delaware's Eric Carter, who's averaging a double-double this season and has developed into one of the top post players in the CAA, and guard Darian Bryant, who's been the Blue Hens' glue guy, doing whatever it takes to help this team win offensively and defensively. There's no question that this will be a much more competitive game this yep. time around. Now here's a look at the rest of the upcoming action around CAA men's basketball. The month of March is not for the weak. If you want to get to the big dance, the road starts here. Every practice, every game leads to this moment. Win or go home. The CAA tournament is coming to Charleston March 9th through 12th. Ten teams, one goal, to be crowned champion. Go to caasports.com for more information. CASports.com will have all the information you need regarding links to live stats, video, and audio coverage. Also, fans, you can watch all the CA.TV action on several devices such as Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, and Android TV by downloading the mm -hmm. CA.TV app that is available now. You can also continue to follow the league on Facebook and Instagram by searching CA Sports. We're also on Twitter at CA Basketball using the hashtag CA Hoops. That is it from us today. Enjoy the games, everyone.